Hey all and welcome back to another video. Dust is a very common issue with a lot of model railroads and mine is no different. And given this layout will be making its home in the garage where I work and build various projects, dust will certainly be a problem. So today I'm dust proofing the layout as best I can so it will require minimum maintenance over its life in the garage. That journey starts with a screen. The screen of choice is 3mm thick clear PVC sheet. The bonus in using a clear sheet like this as opposed to a fabric curtain is you can see the layout even when it's not being used. And just seeing the layout will encourage it to be used more often. The PVC is quite heavy, so I want to avoid hanging it from the top of the overhanging fascia, so that the top fascia doesn't droop down from the excess weight. For that I'm using dowel pins for it to sit along the lower fascia. Any type of dowel should work, I chose 5mm pine. I cut a small groove 3mm wide at one end. This is what the clear PVC sheet will locate into so that it doesn't slide off and fall to the floor. I use a small test piece of acrylic just to make sure it'll fit. Then the excess is trimmed away with a small saw. Because these will sit proud of the fascia, I sand the edges so that they are not sharp, that way if you rub against it, it shouldn't scratch you. Now we just need to do 13 more of these. For each panel I have two dowel pins. They each get spaced apart and measured evenly in from each side of the module. Then to drill out each hole for the dowel I use a template. I made the template so that every hole will be drilled at the exact same height along each of the modules. This is important so each adjoining panel matches up evenly with the other panels across the modules. The dowels are attached with some wood glue. The fascia is only 5mm thick so I am pretty generous with the glue so that the dowel has a good footing and won't pull out. It's quite a tight fit by design so a hammer will likely be needed to drive the dowel all the way down. If it needs a little bit of a twist, a set of pliers will enable you to twist it to get it nice and flat. After each dowel is in place, I give it a test fit just to make sure that it sits properly. With it in position, I slide the panel across so that it fits perfectly flush with the adjacent module. Then on the other side, I mark where the opposite module starts. This little bit of overhanging panel will need to be removed. The easiest way I've found to cut the PVC panel is with a Tamiya plastic scriber. As you drag it across the surface, it removes a small layer with each pass. I pass it across the surface using the ruler as a guide several times, removing a bit of material with each pass until I can easily break away the excess. I also give the edge a light sanding to smoothen any imperfections. You'll also probably want to mark the orientation, so you know exactly how it goes back in place. And it's a perfect fit. Now for the magnetic latches. These will hold them so that they don't fall onto the floor. These latches are laser cut using the BMO. I could of course cut these out manually, but if you have access to a laser cutter it will make the process a bit faster, especially for multiple cuts of the same shape. They have been designed to fit an 8mm diameter magnet. They get sanded on the back so the, the epoxy glue gets a better hold. Acrylic is very smooth and doesn't glue together well if it's left nice and smooth. Once the dust is removed, some epoxy is mixed and used to fix the two sides together. This is 5 minute epoxy, but in reality you have about 2 minutes to use it before it starts to set, so I don't waste any time mixing and applying the glue. Next it's just a matter of pressing the two halves together. The magnets are neodymium magnets. A good strong magnet is essential. Epoxy is used again to hold the magnets in each of the assemblies. It's not super important, but I also make sure the magnet's polarity is facing the same way when it's inserted. Any excess epoxy can be wiped away with some isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel. Just make sure to do this before the epoxy has set and hardened. Similar to the dowels, I use a template for the magnets as well. I mark the PVC sheet first so I know where to add the glue. Then I drill the hole. This hole is for a screw that the magnet will hold on to. The screw needs to sit flush with the fascia, 
so I countersink the hole. Next some wood glue is added for an extra hold given the fascia is quite thin. Finally the screw is screwed in. Until it's flush or slightly even below the surface of the fascia. Now for the magnet assembly. Each location was marked on the PVC sheet. We just need to remove the remaining bit of protective sheet from the PVC. Now we can give this area a light sanding so the glue will hold. Epoxy is applied and the magnet assembly is pressed in place. Once all of the assemblies are done, I use some weights to hold them in place as the epoxy cures. A quick test fit shows the system is working. I could leave them like this, but I want to make them look a little more professional by adding some accent lines across the top and bottom. Using a permanent marker and a straight edge, I mark every line across each panel, making sure the lines meet up between the modules, because some of them are slightly out. Doing this will help hide any slight imperfections. Now a lot of masking is applied, carefully following the lines that have been marked. And also pressing down firmly along the tape edges to ensure no paint will bleed underneath the tape. A roller like this will certainly help. I go pretty heavy with the masking because I don't want to risk any overspray landing on the clear sections. For painting, I'm using Rust-Oleum Flat Black. This is a nice flat colour and will match the rest of the aesthetic. The first coat is very light. I'm trying to avoid any paint potentially running under the tape. A hairdryer helps speed up the drying process. The following two coats of paint are a little heavier. Focusing on getting full and even coverage between the coats. And using the hairdryer between coats to speed up the process. Once the tape is removed you can see how much nicer the panel looks. They really highlight the window effect looking into the layout. Now for the gaps. It's important to fill any gaps and holes that aren't necessary like all these gaps between the foam and the plywood roadbed. To create the gap filler, I'm using a combination of wood glue, sawdust and foam putty from Woodland Scenics. This concoction of ingredients works really well for making a good filler material that will fill medium to large gaps with minimal shrinkage. It's just a rough estimation of the glue, sawdust and foam to give me a whipped cream consistency. The glue makes it nice and sticky, the foam gives it volume and the sawdust, from what I can gather, helps against its shrinking. Before applying it to the gaps, I first lightly wet the surface. Then, with a popsicle stick, I apply the filler to cover the hole. I just get some filler on the stick and slowly work along the edge until the gap is completely filled. There's really no right or wrong way to do this, except you probably want to avoid getting the filler on the track. This will just make things easier later and avoid having extra cleanup to do. You can also use a finger to smooth it out. I just keep working along each module until all the gaps are filled. Obviously avoiding the gaps that connect the two module halves together. They will need to remain free from glue so they can be pulled apart easily. For very big gaps like this, some polystyrene foam was used. Glued in position with some foam tack glue. You can also use masking tape for hard to reach areas or spots where it's not practical to add extra foam. For the gaps between modules, window seal foam works really well. It's easy to stick in place and it's foam so it will compress down to fill the gap but not impede on the ability for the modules to connect together as they need. And while the modules are separated again, it was a good time to give the edges a touch up with some paint. This I'm almost certain won't be the last touch up, but at least in the meantime they'll look nice. Now for the air filter. This contraption will provide filtered air to the inside of the layout at a positive pressure and should help prevent dust being drawn in the cracks and settling on the layout. The model was designed using Tinkercad and has been designed to fit together in a similar way to how a wooden laser cut kit fits together with cutouts and notches for easy assembly. These are all cut using the laser cutter with black acrylic. 
I should also mention if using a laser cutter, you should never cut PVC. It produces a toxic and very dangerous hydrogen chloride gas, which can be deadly. Plus, it will ruin the optics of your laser cutter given it's very corrosive. The box assembles very easily with some epoxy. There was only one small overhanging piece that needed to be filed back so the fan can slide in more easily. I'm using a quiet PC case fan and spray booth filter. The filter material is cut down so that it fits inside the small opening that was designed specifically for this thickness of filter. The fan housing was also designed so that it would be a perfect fit. To stop fingers getting destroyed by the fan, a fan cover from JCAR was used. The cover and fan are locked down in place with some 3mm nut and bolts. To power the four units, I'm using a variable 3 to 12 volt 1.5 amp power supply. A mounting plate was used so the filter assembly had a place to sit and so that it wouldn't slide around when placed on top. Like with all the other acrylic parts, the base is sanded so the glue has something to hold on to. To create an airtight edge and also to stop noise from vibrations, I use some Woodland Scenics paving tape. This works surprisingly well and is just perfect for the job. Once cut to size, the backing tape is peeled away and each piece of tape is stuck down, covering the edge completely, forming a nice airtight seal. As for mounting, I try to space the units evenly across the top, so the airflow is uniform between each unit. I also used expanding polyurethane glue to fix them down. This is because the foam surface I'm gluing to is not perfectly flat, so any gaps between the acrylic and the foam will be filled with expanding foam glue. Once down I used the filter unit as a weight to make sure that the mounting plate didn't move as the glue expanded. Once the glue had gone off, I used a hot wire foam factory hot knife to remove the foam from inside of the mounting plate. The knife is a bit slow, but with the power of editing, it only takes a few seconds. One last final job before turning the filter on is to cover up the gap where the filter is. I just used some electrical tape for this as eventually it will need to be replaced. Once in place you can see it doesn't look too bad, but does it work? The answer is yes, you can see here along this small opening there is a gentle airflow. This positive pressure inside the layout will prevent dust from entering through these small gaps. And the dust in the air will be mostly caught by the filter, providing a nice clean air to the inside. In the end I only needed 3 volts to power the fans to have good airflow. After doing some calculations, if I leave these running every day for the entire year, it will only cost me $7 a year to have them working. Not too bad if it means I can have a dust-free layout. I hope you learned something, and if you want to help support the channel, you might consider becoming a patron. I have a great community over on Patreon, and over the next few months this project progresses, I'll be spending more time there posting updates and talking to you to see what you'd like to see in future videos for this layout build series. And for these $7 patrons, you also get access to my members only area of the website where I have a collection of backdrops that can be printed for your model railroad. And you'll also have access to download items from my store as part of the patron reward. Don't forget, you can also post in the members area. You can post photos, plans, ideas, questions or whatever. I'll be checking it more regularly, so feel free to start a conversation with me over there as well. In the next tutorial, I'll start looking at installing a backdrop. This will make quite a change in the appearance once installed. So stay tuned and don't forget to check out bouldercreekrailroad.com and my patron for updates. Cheers and thanks for watching.